Thank you very much for attending uh, this session. Uh, my name is Danny Nativel, and I'm, today I'm going to uh, give you an, an update uh, on the Sci-5 Open Secure Platform Architecture. I've been um, dealing with security at, at a number of semiconductor companies for more than 20 years, where I learned a lot of things, but I learned an even greater lesson from my daughter. Uh, when she was seven, she came to me and claimed that she was able to log in into my laptop accounts. I look at her amused and say, yeah, you're right, this is impossible, unless you find a way to capture my password. She uh, took my laptop, um, uh, was on the, lock, on the lock screen, hit the uh, escape button, and then she selected a new user. Then there's a trick is here. She hit the uh, escape button again and pressed enter, and she was in. And I was shocked because it was actually a bug in the login manager of one of my Linux machines that has been patched very few days after that event. So when it comes to security, you know it's a never-ending game, and having a bit of hardware security can really help in the process. So when you look at uh, SOC security, there are a couple of things that should be taken into consideration. First of all, legacy is a real burden. A security architecture that has been designed more than 15 years ago is clearly showing its limits with today's uh, multi-core environments and gigantic software stacks. Trying to patch or maintain such uh, architecture opens up new issues and, and also add complexity. Being able to reduce the uh, trusted compute, compute base and the, the amount of code you need to audit and assess is also a great way to reduce the uh, attack vectors. With the exponential number of connected devices today, uh, device ownership uh, is mandatory, and you truly need a way to uh, authenticate your firmware and also allow uh, those mandatory uh, uh, over the updates. Finally, security through obscurity just doesn't work anymore. People want to have access to details, software, source code, uh, hardware implementations, so they can, they can get their, their, own, their own opinion and also assess what you've, do, what you've done. So, on the, RISC -V, on, the, on, on the RISC V world, there's a couple of things that could be improved to make it more secure. First of all, uh, RISC V come with the uh, PMP, PMP and PMA, which are really great tools to enforce security and, and memory uh, protection at the core level. But it, don't, it doesn't scale very well across multiple cores because you constantly need to maintain the, the same PMP configura configuration across all the cores in your system. Furthermore, it would be nice to have a, a, a way to have a better isolation between not only the cores, but also other burst masters sitting on your, on your, on your system, like a DMA controller or a DSP, for example. Um, to, in today's RISC V implementation, the only way to uh, prevent access to a peripheral is to allocate a PMP region to lock down this peripheral, which is a very expensive uh, way to do it. It would be much nicer to have a way to have a fine grain control per peripheral to, uh, to, to uh, allow the user to select the, the peripheral they, they are allowed to access to. And finally, um, using uh, a collection of third party proprietary uh, security patches um, is not really matching the, uh, the idea of RISC V openness. So I truly believe that having a unified and open hardware and software security architecture can uh, boost the uh, adoption of the RISC V core. So some of you might have heard about Sci-5 Shield that has been announced about a month ago at the Linlay Fall Processor Conference. <clears throat> Sci-5 Shield is an open secure platform architecture that has been designed for uh, uh, system level security. Uh, it, is, it is a scalable solution and that also uh, allow a great level of customization. So what does Sci-5 Shield contain? It's built upon a number of layers. It starts with a proper root of trust, where we provide uh, the, the right uh, uh, device ownership. We are then adding a number of hardware mechanisms to uh, prevent against a number of threats that I will uh, detail later on. We also have uh, cryptographic engines that are uh, protected, protected against uh, such attacks. And we are facilitating the, uh, the connection between the hardware and the software, such as operating system and communication stack to make use of those uh, crypto cryptographic blocks. Finally, we are envisioning a secure lifecycle 
that is not only uh, tied to the key management or key provisioning, but also to provide better confidence to our customers by providing a security evaluation of our implementation, architecture, and IPs. So the root of trust starts with uh, the, the, possibility, the capability to properly uh, store uh, keys and certificates on chip. Then Sci5 is uh, going to offer a service for, uh, for doing um, a proper key provisioning and certificate provisioning at test. So we can deliver chips that are already pre-personalized uh, for customers, so they can inject their firmware that can only be uh, coming from them and has been signed by them. Um, we're also open sourcing uh, a secure boots for uh, this architecture. So everybody will be able to audit, uh, modify, and, and adapt to their own needs. This secure boot has a number of features, including version management and support for different applets. And finally, we are taking advantage of the RISC-5 debug module interface uh, to add uh, an authentication uh, scheme um, uh, to make it more secure and allow you to re-enable uh, debug and, and debug and trace uh, from part in the field, for example. So the secure boot flow we, we design is pretty flexible. It works on both embedded systems and, and Linux-based systems. Uh, so for embedded system, it, it relies ex exclusively on, on a secure boot ROM. And on other systems, we have a, a second level bootloader that allows you to boot from different sources and allows you to configure your, your, your platform, such as DDR timings, for example. So I'm very pleased today to announce you the, uh, the release of the uh, open source secure boot ROM that is available today on our public GitHub repo. Uh, this, is, this code is available on, on the uh, MIT license. It, uh, it gives you the opportunity to have your firmware uh, signed by uh, uh, an ECDSA digital signature uh, and combined with a SHA-384 uh, secure hash. This secure boot supports a number of interfaces, um, booting from USB, uh, UART, Quad Spy, EMMC, for example. We also have a, a secure update mechanism, so we, we do version management. We also prevent, uh, for, we have provision for anti-rollback uh, 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 mechanism. Um, the, the, the boot ROM itself can be given patch by, uh, by uh, security patches. So each function in the boot uh, has a corresponding index that can be linked to a, a patch in an external memory that has been signed by, by, by the customer. And if the secure boot ROM is, doesn't support features you, you would like, you can also develop your own applets uh, to that secure boot ROM, sign this applet, and make it run uh, by the, the secure boot ROM. And finally, we also uh, uh, enable or secure, secure debug uh, interface with, uh, through that secure boot ROM. Um, so the, we, we took the advantage of the, the RISC-V uh, standard, which uh, really already defined the, the, uh, the, the debug module and the authentication module. But today, the authentication module has been kind of a placeholder. So we try to, to fill that gap and add uh, uh, a novelty way of uh, authenticating uh, remote host by modifying this auth authentication module and add support for public key cryptography. And this uh, allows our uh, advanced uh, trace module that is uh, Nexus and Corsair compliant to be secure and to be brought back uh, in, uh, from parts in the field for proper RMS support, for example. So on the threat prevention aspect, we are I think we're doing a couple of things. We are first relying on existing uh, risc 5 mechanisms, such as the, uh, the PMP and PMA, uh, which are doing a great job for protecting the, uh, at the core level. We're also adding tweaking and adding a mechanism uh, in our uh, cache controllers to prevent against uh, cache attack, different cache attacks, side channel cache attacks that are very popular these days. And we're also adding fault detectors, which are digital sensors that we are decimating, decimating across the entire chip and that monitor critical paths in the system to, uh, to detect out of range operations such as over temperature, over voltage, or over frequency, for example. And on top of that, we are adding our Sci-5 wall guard, which is a multi-domain uh, hardware and force uh, security solution to protect core and other burst masters uh, against peripherals and memories. So wall guard has been announced also a month ago. Wall guard is a is a hardware-enforced um, security model with fine-grain control. Um, it provides uh, you a way to securely uh, control and secure data and code running on your system. 
uh, including uh, cache, uh, uh, interconnect, memories, peripheral, and, and cores. So how does Sci-Fi World Guide work? It's very simple. We didn't want to touch the, the uh, RIS-5 ASA. You know, this is kind of, you don't want to do that. We want everybody to embrace that architecture. So what we're doing here, instead of trying to modify the core, is to tag all transaction, to tag or mark all transaction com coming out of uh, a bus master with an ID that we call world ID. Uh, this world ID is propagated through the bus down to the, the different caches, down to the, uh, the, the, the matrix, and, and down to the peripherals and memory. At the peripheral and memory level, we have filters um, that uh, do enforce policies. For example, on the left-hand side, we have the world guard PMP, which is very similar to the PMP found, uh, found in the uh, RIS-5 core, with the, exception, with the addition of, uh, of a world ID access control list. So given a uh, world guard PMP region can be mapped, can be unique to a world, or shared between different worlds. Same goes for the, uh, the uh, IO filter, the world guard filter where each peripheral has its own uh, access control list uh, that can filter access to a given peripheral. So uh, a UART, a SPI, can be unique to one wall or share between different walls. As you can see here, the cores themselves are even not aware about being tagged at, at any point of time. So that opens up also uh, a new opportunity for third-party development uh, on the software side. So you could open up look, the core N, for example, where uh, uh, someone would have full access to the core and, and develop code even in machine mode and without knowing that it's been constrained into a given memory and uh, peripheral set subsystem. Core zero could even go back in, could, could be detrusted. Uh, the mode of operation we're using here is called uh, core driven because the core zero is the one that is setting up all the policies for the, uh, the wall ID on the masters and setting up the policies at, on the slave level. But the core zero could be detrusted de later on if your configuration is not changing and also belong to a, a given world with the same constraints. We have another mode of operation called process driven that runs on a single, single, core per, single core implementation where we map uh, a PID of an author's task to a world so we can truly isolate uh, tasks from each other. And we also take advantage of the, uh, the RISC V core to be able to run uh, full interrupt support in user mode, uh, so we don't have a lot of code in the in machine mode running to do the uh, the monitoring. On the crypto side, we are um, uh, we are releasing a couple of hardware hardware blocks, including a, a fully evaluated TRNG, which is 100% digital, works on any any kind of uh, technology uh, that is compatible with the latest NIST SP800 uh, A, B, and C. Um, we also are uh, providing uh, crypto blocks such as uh, AES engines that are SCA resistant and that support multiple modes, including GCM, CCM, CTR, ECB, CBC, and many others. Um, and in addition to that, we are also have uh, ASH engines and public key cryptography uh, blocks. Those blocks are supported by an open source cryptographic library that is released today on, uh, publicly on, on GitHub. Uh, you can see the address here. Um, and that will be combined with the secure boot to provide a better user experience. So on the software side, as you can imagine, we're opening up pretty much everything. We want to simplify the access to the RISC V security. So in addition to our, our Freedom Metal uh, BSP, we are stacking additional uh, connectors and wrappers to, uh, make it, to make the use of our crypto blocks easier. So we are adding S2N TLS wrapper, for example, or OpenSSL wrappers. So um, those stacks can easily access our, our, our crypto primitives for TRNG, for AES, for SHA, and for public key, for example. We're also working extensively with a cloud service provider to simplify the access to cloud using our cryptography and key storage solution. And finally, we will release an open source version of our, our, our uh, Sci-Fi World Guard monitor, which aims to uh, control and set up the configuration of our World Guard architecture. So on the secure lifecycle, again, I really want to insist on the fact that it's not only about key provisioning or certificate provisioning, it's really about the complete ecosystem, the complete food chain we want to give confidence on. We want to provide our customer with a number of security evaluation performed by external security labs um, to show that what, what, what we are doing, what we are implementing is secure enough. We will also have a formal verification performed on our uh, secure debug uh, interface. 
So now that now that you learn about Sci-Fi Shield, let me walk through uh, you through some uh, of the uh, Sci-Fi Shield competitive advantage. Um, so the number of worlds, zone, domains is limited by customers and not arch architecture on the uh, on the Sci-Fi World God uh, uh, concept, where competitive solutions have been using two worlds for more than 15 years which kind of limit the, uh, the, the possibilities, especially with multi-core, where the partitioning with two worlds is kind of difficult to manage. Um, software complexity remains very low with our solution. As you, can, as you, as you saw, the, the, uh, the tagging mechanism is such a simple thing that it doesn't interfere with the, the, the software running already on the core, where the competition has been patching their security architecture for many years, making it, making it very, very hard to understand, and also make it the uh, the trusted code base is very, very big. Uh, we're not modifying the uh, RISC-5 ISA, um, where competitive solution is, uh, has added uh, custom instructions to support their trusted and untrusted worlds. We take advantage of the, uh, the full interrupt management, full interrupt support in, uh, in user mode that the RISC-5 offer. And we also do DMA protection, memory protection, and so on. On the key provisioning side, we aim to be a one-stop shop solution for not only the RISC-5 core, RISC-5 IP, RISC-5 security, but also for your, your key provisioning, so you can assess the entire food chain of your chip. And finally, we just open sold the secure boot. Uh, our competitor has opened up uh, a secure boot for a range of products, their latest generation, but not for the one before. So here's the... Um, an overview about uh, sci five Shield. Um, as you can see, there are about more than 14 different evaluations that we will be running on IP, architecture, and software. We will also have uh, eight uh, independent uh, you know, community-run uh, uh, evaluations on some of the, the modules. Um, I really want to stress out that uh, our goal is to contribute all that work uh, on security and architecture back to the foundation because we, want, we truly want other uh, RISC-5 vendors to embrace this architecture so security can move a step up. And I, I, I really hope that one day there, there is some kind of uh, shared uh, security, RISC-5 security certification uh, shared amongst the different RISC-5 members so we, we can play uh, in a different, different game. So we are working hard uh, to make this happen. Um, we are doing pretty good on 2019. Uh, most, of, most, if not all, of the blocks and, IP and software is available, will be available by the end of this year, which is very, very soon. Um, early next year, we will be demonstrating uh, Sci-Fi World Guard, and we will be releasing that to some of our, our customers. We will also um, provide uh, high-speed uh, AES engine, like 25 gigabit per second AES blocks, as well as DDR encryption and integrity. For the future, we're looking at control flow integrity and also post quantum cryptography once everything is uh, you know, standardized. All right, I think that's my last slide. Well, thank you very much for your time. And if you have any question, <laughs> I will be there all, 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 all day, so you can stop by the, uh, the sci-fi booth and uh, you know, say hello or ask questions. Thank you very much.